Welcome to the live steam build of Charles, the Penryn quarry engine. This is being built to 1 12th scale to run on gauge 1 or G gauge 45mm gauge track. This is a bit of a bumper addition. There is a finishing off of the valve gear and preparing for the chassis air test. I'll be making mistakes but repairing them. The Unimat 3 lathe has been put back into service and I'm really enjoying it. Small bearing bolts for the valve gear have been made. The steam inlet and exhaust outlet manifolds were made. There has been power threading brass with a split die. Nuts have been made for various parts in brass and steel. A piston rod thread has been extended without removing the piston. And an oil hole for the crosshead gudgeon pin has been added. I toyed with the idea of moving the pivot point yet again. There wasn't a noticeable advantage, so it wasn't continued with. The expansion link was modified, but no harm done. Drilling through an inner eccentric for the retaining plate screwed hole. Both plates attached by a single countersunk screw. Making axle spacers. These fit between the wheels to keep them the correct distance apart. Only one wheel is locked tighted to each axle at this stage. It's a 5 16th drill. Axle spacers fitted in position. The three parts that make up the expansion link. For the left side cylinder, 1 8 inch thick steel pieces. Truing up the faces. The brazing didn't go as well as the first time. I drilled a hole in the wrong position, so to fix it I brazed in a panel pin. This worked out well. Face skimmed again after the hole has been plugged. I reused the Google Sheets calculations to mill the curved slot in the expansion link. The slot has been milled. It was cut with a 1 8 slot drill. I started at one end by drilling a 3 mil hole and then in with a slot drill. After that it's 10 thou increments all the way along, adjusting the vertical slide as necessary. I think I managed to take all day doing it. Those eccentric strap rods have been loctited into their sockets. When testing I realised there was so little force on them, as one rod pulls, the other is pushing. The Unimat 3 is great for second operations. Here's a 1 quarter inch AF rocker arm nut for the left side. Just been faced to length and the thread chamfered. It's 1 8 inch BSW. The corners have been rounded and the slot smoothed with a needle file. Drilling through 8BA tapping size from the body and through the side plates, one after another. It's not a nice job. Takes lots of time aligning, both holes drilled with careful juggling of the toolmaker's clamps. Expansion link side plates. Drill 2.2 and countersunk to suit my 8BA screws. The heads really need to be as flush as possible. The die block is a piece of 1 8 silver steel, turn down a couple of thou and drill through for the 8BA screw that attaches it to the extension rod. The new expansion link hanger bolt that replaces the screw previously used. Making longer bolts for the forks on the eccentric straps. The bolts in position ready for the expansion link. Halfway into the steam inlet manifold. I needed this for the chassis air test. Starting to thread 3 sixteenths by 40 TPI on the left hand end. It's 5 sixteenths AF brass bar turned down to 3 sixteenths, 4.925 inches long. Power threading at 200 RPM. Power reversing the split die off the job. The thread after power cutting. 
Finish the second end in the screwed bush. The hex has been chamfered and the job drilled right through 1.5mm. One of two locking nuts for the inlet. 1 8 inch thick, chamfered both sides with a round nose undercutting tool, drilled and tapped 3 16 by 40 TPI as well. Second operation on the nut in the Unimat. Face to length and chamfer the thread. Here are the steam inlet component parts. There's the 5 16 inch square body with 1 8 inch tubing being loctited in. The body is tapped all the way to the middle from both ends. The external threaded pieces screw right in so that I can get the assembly into the smoke box and then unscrew each side into the cylinder's steam inlet ports. It's in position, ready for testing. Definitely a boiler out job. The air test revealed improvements needed to be made. The piston was a little too wide at the front. I took 10 thou off with a round nose tool. As I've got the compound slide of the Myford set to turn parallel so nicely, I decided to press right on with the exhaust manifold before doing any milling. I've already made the body from 3 8 square brass. Now here's the first of the side pieces from 3 8 AF hex. Threaded 1 quarter inch by 40 TPI. The length dimensions are all the same, which makes it easy. I turn the quarter inch diameter halfway at a time, as the overhang is quite large, to give the ends some more support. This may well not be necessary. The end is finished, now to progress the rest. Finish turned, threaded, chamfered on the hex and drilled 1 8 inch diameter. Holding on the thread was ok for turning and drilling the second end, but would not be secure enough for thread cutting with the die. In the screwed bush for threading, it doesn't run very true, so I didn't do the other operations in the bush. The die will follow the job nicely. Making 3 8 inch AF nuts, chamfering, drilling and tapping 1 quarter inch by 40 TPI. Finishing it in the Unimat. Lining up the nut in the chuck using the tap. Ready for facing off and chamfering the thread. I decided to use the same type of blast nozzle arrangement as used on the quarry Hunslet. That's standardization. I turned a 732 by 40 TPI adapter that is to be brazed to the exhaust manifold body. This will allow the existing blast nozzles to be screwed on and tested for size. Here's the component parts. The next job. A lock nut is needed for the crosshead, but there isn't enough thread. Extending the thread is tricky because I don't want to remove the piston, and with the piston on it won't fit in the collet chuck, and the collet is the only way to securely grip it to cut the thread with split die. So I picked up the thread with a screw cutting tool and took the depth as far as I could, and then a finish with the die. The piston rod didn't slip. If it does, the surface is damaged. Testing the thread with the crosshead. All is good. It's almost seamless. I can't see the join here. A steel quarter inch AF nut was made for each crosshead. I'll have to modify the right side piston rod too. It's a 4mm rod with 5 30 seconds by 40 TPI thread. Here's the nut in position. Second nut finished for the right side. Just about to start drilling for the oil hole. The crosshead has been set over 8 degrees to mimic the position it is on the loco. Straight through with a 1.5mm drill. The hole is centred about the gudgeon pin hole. Here's the hole in the bearing surface. Hopefully oil will drip through onto the gudgeon pin area. Back to the exhaust manifold. I counterbored a blind 3 16 hole for the blast spigot to be brazed to. This is to stop any silver solder making its way into the threads below. Flux and a snippet of braze inside the blind 1 8 inch hole. It worked. 
The flux crept to the outside, and the snippet remained at the bottom and melted, and flowed nicely with minimum creeping up the spigot thread. Drilling through one-eighth into the manifold body. Whilst the steam inlet fitted the cylinders well, the exhaust did not. It's just luck. One of the threads was half a turn out of sync, and whilst it could be screwed in with a spanner, it was forcing the cylinders twelve thou apart. Skimming twelve thou off the end did nothing to improve matters. I've done this before, and should have remembered. It's the thread position that's wrong, not the length. I slept on the problem, and came up with this plan, and avoided remaking any parts. The piece was parted in two at the hex, and then loosely joined with a piece of one-eighth tube. With the parts able to spin independently, the manifold was fitted easily. The locking nut was superglued to the thread and used as a position indicator with marker pen. The job was removed, separated, fluxed up, and carefully silver brazed to avoid the superglued nut getting the same treatment. Fortunately it didn't, and was unscrewed afterwards. Both manifolds fitted. Vertically there's just enough room for exchanging blast nozzles. The 2mm nozzle is fitted. This is a good approximate size for the 20mm cylinders. Thanks for watching.